Morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's match day. It's Leeds United versus Sheffield Wednesday. Come on, Wednesday! 8 p.m. this evening. Get your score predictions in the comment section below. Make sure you're interacting and engaging with the channel by putting any comment that you have, any feedback for the video, negative or positive, as long as it is not abuse, we welcome it. We welcome different opinions here on the One Leeds Fan Channel and everybody. Different opinions is what we also amplify on the Patreon. Make sure you check that out. Link in the description below. A fiver, four quid actually, four quid. Daylight savings, literally. Um, on the Patreon, we've got additional podcasts on there. We'll have some stuff there after the game this evening as well. Make sure you're checking all that stuff out. We've got the debrief coming back at you next week as well. All the good stuff is coming back on the channel when we actually have a bit of regularity, a little bit of a schedule cleanse. Not four games in 10 days, which can be a nightmare for a fan channel, everybody. Some of you think that it's fantastic. It can be a nightmare because I want to give you a bit of content. I want to give you opinion, discussion, debate, and I can't do that all the time. I can't create these great videos if they've got game after game after game after games. It just becomes purely a reaction channel and I don't want this to be that. So let's get in to uh, today's news. According to Team Talk, there is a uh, uh, a high likelihood that Chelsea are going to be putting a bid in for Christensen or Somerville. They value him um, alongside Atletico, Bill Bauman, Nico Williams above a whole host of their talent at this moment in time. We spoke the other day about Todd Bowley going in for Somerville and how high will this man go? Because it seems like when it comes to valuations, this guy doesn't have a ceiling. He breaks that ceiling. He smashes that ceiling to bits when it comes to transfer records every week. Wages every single week just go through the roof. Look at Enzo Fernandez on an absolute ridiculous amount. And how have they solved that? Well, they've just elongated his contract to about 44 years. So they're able to get within those FFP or just general football money restraints, which is just hilarious on, on so many levels. And we'll get into another bit of of, of, of hilarity when it comes to uh, teams in, in our division trying to wrangle that FFP stuff. But there you go. So it looks like Christensen Somerville is going to be a target. Now, our man Jed Spence has come out and he's spoken and The Athletic have done a report that he's essentially felt a little bit demonised with some of the feedback. And this is what I was a little bit wary of with Jed. You know, as soon as he went, you've seen stuff online like he refused to go to a child hospital and, and all this sort of stuff. And it's a bit mental, to be honest with you. But whether or not that's true, I'm not sure. But yeah, he basically has come out and what we all sort of expected him to say was the you know the the obvious which is i i didn't get put in my original place which was right back every single every single game and it inhibited my progress really you know i was struggling i got back from injury and you know essentially five out of the six games i think the last six games he played for Leeds united he was you know when he was making an appearance or, or even in general he was coming on and he was playing left back which is going to stun anyone's progress connor roberts has had the luxury of not having to do that uh, because of squad selection injuries, yada, yada, Junior Firpo coming in naturally being in favour. You know, that would have helped Spence a lot. And I think he'd probably still be at Leeds if Junior Firpo was in favour within those months and was injury free as well. But unfortunately, he wasn't and Spence was being put to left back. So that did inhibit him a little bit. As I've just said, Connor Roberts hasn't had that, which has aided his development at Leeds, albeit being a very short period of time. But I don't think Roberts would have enjoyed it either. So that is where I completely sympathise with Jed Spence. And from a human level, it must have been really, really tough. The attitude comments did rattle me at the start a little bit because I didn't really understand where that was coming from. It wasn't a problem at Forest. It seems to be a little bit of a problem at Tottenham Hotspur. And Stevie Cooper just seemed to be able to probably get the best out of Jed Spence. And some some people work better with certain managers on the, the rumour mill. You do hear a lot of Steve Cooper being an excellent man manager from his time at England, Liverpool, and obviously Nottingham Forest, getting the best out of everyone when he's had a massive squad to work with as well and getting a tune out of a, a really sort of um, ambitious owner's selection of players where Cooper wasn't even really bringing them in but Jed Spence was one of the highlight reels of Steve Cooper's time at Forest obviously famously it didn't work with Warnock at Middlesbrough as well when it came to Jed Spence so there could be something in that but it seemed it wasn't working at Leeds United ultimately probably because he knocked on the gaffer's door and said I'm not happy with playing left back Farker maybe took umbrage to that now we do have to go on Daniel Farker's side of course we do because he's the manager he's done really well when it's come to man management when I was talking originally about Jed Spence, and I have to be completely honest here, it's because I had heard multiple. And when I talk about one or two, I'm talking multiple 
rumours about him having huge fallouts with players and, and players not knowing why. They're not knowing what, what, I mean, what, what was the reason he's upset with me. And then Farker just getting rid of them, you know, out of the squad or albeit just on the put on the transfers. And that's, from, look, you don't have to believe me. Of course you don't. I understand that. But that is from literally a nailed on source. Another club he's been at, nailed on. A very, very good source. So um, I was very much on the, well, I know a couple of bits um, from, from players as well. And I was judging Farker a little bit on that and there could be something in that you know Jed Spence could be completely right but you know we do have to trust Daniel Farker a little bit that maybe it wasn't working with Spence and it is worked out in the long term when it comes to his um his long-term plan at Leeds and getting Connor Roberts wasn't a bad idea but Leeds did have Roberts in their sites before they got Jed Spence which is interesting uh, in itself. Uh, Leeds United's promotion rivals Leicester City have, have, have all of a sudden been in hot water over profit and sustainability rules uh, following an EFL statement flagging um, the worrying Foxes finances. The Whites are pushing for promotion to the Premier League. Enzo Maresca's Foxes have been the pick of the bunch. 8 to 1 points so far but the EFL released a statement pointing out that they believe that Leicester are going to be in breach of profit and sustainability rules when their accounts are published for the 23-24 season. Now I'm pretty sure they borrowed a lot of money for this season and there has to be a guarantee that they get promoted or they're in big, big trouble. And this was flagged by Kieran Maguire about a year ago now that Leicester are going down and they will be in a lot of trouble if they don't get back to the Premier League because they've off, they've, they've borrowed a lot of money from the bank. They owe that money back, obviously, and um, they are going to be in breach and it looks like this is coming to fruition here. It's expected from the Independent Club Financial Reporting Unit that the Foxes will be breaching the EFL's PSR rules, but Leicester's argument is that they have no grounds to request such proof of correcting the matter for the time being and could well be in the Premier League anyway when this becomes a discussion. Um, so... Yeah, uh, you judge it on three-year accounting periods. Leicester covers two years in the Premier League plus the season in the Championship. You can lose thirty-five million a year in the Premier League. You can lose top-end figure of thirteen million in the Championship, and therefore their losses. We won't get into things that are exempt from FFP under FFP rules. What counts is it amounts uh, to be eighty-three million quid or below. So it's going to be fascinating to see what happens here regarding Leicester, but there's going to be no points deduction this year, the simplified thing, but there will probably be potentially a, a points deduction next year and a, and a significant fine, which seems to be all over at this moment in time when it comes to the Premier League and Everton and Forest and obviously Man City's 115 charges as well. And now if Leicester get back there, they could be uh, starting it, uh, starting the season with a, um, with a points deduction, which is really, really interesting. Um, and something that I just wanted to, to speak on at the end, really, of, of the show is how I expect Leeds. And I put this out on, on Twitter this morning. I will say this, just, just a big congratulations to start with. Daniel Farker has become Skybet Manager of the month uh, for this month. And then Amari Hutchinson, who's been excellent for Ipswich Town, um, has, has become Player of, of the Month, I believe. Um and something else as well, the most valuable English championship is Elan Mele and Nep, Harwood Bellis, Faze, Archie Gray right back, Carl Walker Peters left back, Jewsbury Hall and Didi, Somerville, Rutter, Armstrong and Nonso. So Leeds United comprising one, two, three, four, five. Um, more than any other club in this uh, transfer 11, actually, which is pretty interesting. Um, but. But yeah, everybody, we're, we're sort of uh, we're sort of looking at the game this evening, um, and I'm I'm really fascinated by this one now. Something I did put out on Twitter as I was just about to discuss there was Leeds's low ranking when it comes to switching balls. Now this is something tactically that I've been speaking about to you guys for a long, long time. Leeds switching the ball, increasing the speed of play. Leeds were at the top when it came to switching balls. Um, speed of play is increased. You switch the ball instantaneously. You've got a fullback 1v1 against the winger. Calvin Phillips made um, that when it came to Leeds United and Marcelo Bielsa. He'd be in that pivot position and he'd switch it left, he'd switch it right, and he'd have Jack Harrison, you'd have Helder Costa 1v1 against the fullback. Leeds just don't do that anymore and it slows our play. And against the low block side and mid block side, that switch in play needs to be absolutely essential right now. But it needs to be imperative, I should say, right now. But the interesting statistic is Leeds are second bottom when it comes to switches. In Marcelo Bielsa's tenure, they were top. And I think that is why sometimes we struggle to get that increased speed when it comes to play and we struggle to break down low to mid blocks because we are not switching quickly enough. We're not moving the opposition around quickly enough and we're not isolating fullbacks quickly and effective enough. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, everybody. We'll be back with your instant match reaction tonight. We'll be back with three things tomorrow. We'll be back with your player ratings tonight as well. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'll see you in a bit.
Oh, and before I do go, everybody, make sure you check out SofaScore. They've got all your preview out for this evening. See you in a bit.